yes, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another homemade madness video. So I'm building a completely homemade jet ski from scratch. And in the first three videos of this project, I've built the jet ski's hull, top half and made a homemade jet drive. So make sure to check out these videos if you haven't already. And the next step in this project is to give this jet ski an engine. Now for the engine, I've chosen to put in a superbike engine because these engines have a lot of power, will rev all the way up to 12,000 RPM, but are still pretty small and lightweight. And also I think an engine like this will make this project much more special. So I do have some experience with using a superbike engine in a watercraft. I built a 1000cc bike engine in a tiny speedboat back in 2020 and I also made some videos about it. It worked pretty good, but I did learn a lot from the mistakes I made, so this time I'll make it way better. Ok that's enough talking, now let's get this bike, take it for a quick test ride and then tear out the engine, put it in the hull and connect it to the jet drive. So here's the bike, Kawasaki ZZR 1200, super fast, 0 to 60 in 2-3 seconds, top speed 270 km per hour, wheelies in 1st, 2nd and 3rd gear, and it's by far the fastest bike I've ever ridden. And in its time, this was actually the 2nd fastest production bike in the world, right after, uh, you know it, the Hayabusa, which is of course 1300cc, this is 1200, but it's still plenty fast and it's way cheaper. So, for an line engine, water cooled, carburetors, should make around 170 180 horsepower. So, next up, well, let's tear it apart. So, as you can see, it's actually quite a nice bike, and I'm a bit sorry to tear it apart. There's minimal scratches, and it's just well, looking pretty good, but I got it pretty cheap and in here is what I want, the engine, so let's tear it out.
Okay, so got the engine out and it's pretty small and compact if you think about what it is. Four cylinders with the clutch and six gears. So here are the four carburetors looking pretty good as well. And this is the original air filter which went something like this on here. But I don't think it'll fit in there so I'll have to come up with something else. But I'll figure it out. So next job is to simply put this engine in the jet ski and hook it up to the jet drive. But how am I going to do that? Well, I have a plan. First of all, I have these engine mounts, which are a bit springy because they have rubber in them. So what I'll do is I'll make a steel frame, which mounts to the engine and then mounts to one of these in each corner. And then I can mount these to the foundation in the hull and then the engine is in place. And then something else I've been getting a lot of questions and comments about and I've also been thinking about quite a lot myself is how I'm going to attach this engine to the prop shaft right here. So first thing I could do is remove this plate and behind here is the crankshaft and then couple the crankshaft to the shaft. But this engine spins at maximum around 12,000 RPM and the shaft should spin around 8,000 RPM. So that's way too much. And next thing I could do is mount it to the clutch basket, which is around here. And the clutch basket is geared down from here to here by about one to two. So that means even if I could make a special cover to go around here with an oil seal and a shaft coming out here, it would only spin about 6000 RPM, which is well, again, a bit too slow. So the third option is what I'm going to do. Take the drive sprocket off, make this shaft a bit longer so it comes out around here. And then I'll have a belt and pulley system taking the power back to the middle and then to the shaft. And then I can change gearing if I want maybe a bit more top speed or a bit more acceleration. And I can also change the gearing of this belt system, which I'll build later. And then I don't have to modify the engine at all. And I can choose the gears, but it will be a bit tricky to make, but I'll figure it out. But first let's mount this engine in the hull. Okay, so I got the engine in place where it needs to be, it fits nicely. And next up, well, I'm going to mount it. So first thing to do is make a nice solid base to which I can mount the engine. So what I'll do is make two 2x4s two which go all the way to the back. And then I'll make a steel frame to mount the engine to. And then the steel frame will sit on these rubber engine mounts. So it can vibrate a little bit on the 2x4s. And once that's done, we'll focus on the drive line.
Okay, so I got the engine in on the rubbers. It can wiggle about a little bit. So hopefully I don't have any vibrations in the rest of the jet ski. So that's all good for now. But next up is a tricky thing. Connecting this bracket to this shaft. So what I have to do with is this. This is a drive belt with two pulleys. And these pulleys have taper locks in them. So this part is slightly tapered and this inside as well. So as you push this in here by putting bolts in here, it will clamp around the shaft. And I've turned this one down a little bit so it fits on this shaft. And I'll grind the keyway in here later and put a key in there. The belt will go on here and the bigger pulley will of course go on this side. And then this is the belt drive setup. And this one is a lot smaller than this one, which of course means this will spin a lot faster. And I have this bearing to go on here and keep this shaft in place. And then I have these two bearings, which will go on this side and on this side. And of course it's pretty hard to align this shaft perfectly with this one. And also this will shake a little bit because this is on rubbers and this isn't. So to make that possible, I have this drive shaft from a VW Golf and I'll shorten it a little bit and make a special adapter so this will fit on there. This shaft will go in here and then we have our drivetrain system. So first I'll make a steel frame to go in here, mount this bearing to it, mount these bearings to it and make sure they can slide a little bit to tension the belt and then I'll figure out the drive shaft. Okay, so that's the drive belt done, working pretty good, running smoothly. I can tension it using these slots and move the bearings about a little bit. So next up is to connect this shaft to this bracket. And to do it I'll be using this drive shaft from a car. And first thing to do is connect this side to the engine.
Okay, so that's it for this video guys. Uh, let me know what you think about this setup and if it will work. I'm pretty confident it will, but we'll see. So next part, we'll hook up the engine to the exhaust, cooling, wiring, all the difficult stuff. And basically just get the engine running and then I can put in some quick steering, make a seat, hook up the throttle and take this thing for a test drive and basically a super small overpowered jet boat. So that'll be fun. But that's all in the next video for now. Thanks for watching. See you then.